as you think about that lasting legacy that you want to have on on the company, what do you hope to to leave? You know, with the the Shul's name and the Shul business. You know, we have um, a lot of employees who have been with us uh, a long time. We've tried to uh, develop employees and you know tried to promote employees from within. You know, it's sort of a cliche, but you know that's really an effort that we make. If you wanted to say the big picture, the big legacy is just the fact that we've tried to have our own employees uh, grow and you know prosper and um, just make great contributions to our success. Welcome into the Independent Thinking Podcast. This is your host, Rob Stott. We have uh, uh, so many amazing member stories, which I, I said it a couple of times on you know these podcasts, but that's why I love you know being able to have a podcast is that we get to tell those stories. And uh, the one we've got today is a, a cool one that not even just we're recognizing here on the podcast. It's actually one that's been recognized within the industry. And um, you know the, the, it's Shul's home that is down in uh, the Lynchburg, Virginia area, uh, 50 locations in and around you know there spread out you know, across the state and and uh, whatnot. But uh, Jack Shule is a fourth generation co-owner of the business and uh, joins us today to talk about their 125 year legacy uh, and and the work that they've done. You know, creating, building their business and evolving over time and. Um, you know, ultimately that's resulted in furniture today, honoring them with a retail giant in the betting space at their upcoming betting conference, uh, here in mid-May. So, um, one, like I said, you know, it's not just one that we've recognized, but that others in the industry have recognized and, uh, you know, excited to share it. I, he's got a really cool story, one to tell of, uh, you know, how, uh, very passionate about marketing and, and how that's changed over, uh, you know, his involvement in the company, his time being involved in the company, um, you know, in the early eighties to, to what it is today. So uh cool story. One, one, I think, you know, we'll take, be able to take a lot of lessons out of, uh, you know, in what Schulz has done uh, to stay, you know, in business and successful for 125 plus years, man, crazy, crazy long legacy. So cool to hear, but let's dive into it. This is Jack Schul here on the independent thinking podcast. All right, we're back on the Independent Thinking Podcast and excited to be joined today by a member down there in Lynchburg, Virginia, uh, learning that's the, around the, the central portion of the states. Um, so I myself uh, grew up a little bit, well, not grew up, I spent about five years in the DMV, so not uh, not too far from where you are, Mr. Jack Shul, uh, down there with Shules in, in, in Lynchburg. How are you doing today? Doing great, doing great. Glad to be with you. Yeah, appreciate you taking the time and uh, a pretty cool honor that we're going to get to talk about. I know Schulz is up for, uh, you guys are going to be recognized, perhaps by the time this is published, uh, will have been recognized with uh, one of Furniture Today's uh, betting retail giant uh, honorees. So a pretty cool thing that we'll get to dive into. But before we get there, you know, tell us a little bit about, about yourself and uh, your, your path into the family business there uh, at Schulz. Well, uh, I guess I... It's been a long time, so it's uh, <laughs> my memory's not as good as it used to be. But uh, I guess I started working at Shules in 1982 as a salesman, and then uh, after a couple of years, I worked as a manager of a store, and then uh, I became a regional supervisor and got involved in the buying at that time, uh, and then gravitated toward advertising, and uh, I was mainly involved in buying and advertising uh, for a number of years. Uh, and then in 2000, uh, I took some time off and uh, I actually left the company. Uh, and then uh, I came back in 2011 and continued working with advertising and merchandising, basically appliances and electronics and, and did all the advertising for the company. And then in, I guess it was 2019, uh, I took over the betting department. And I guess that's why we're here today. No, that's, that's awesome. And I, I mean, obviously, as uh, you're fourth generation, correct? Is that right? Fourth generation for the, uh, the Shul family? 
Yes, fourth generation. So now, is was there ever a question as to whether or not you would be involved in the business at some point? Yeah, there was a question. Uh, I think all of us who've come into the business have uh, dallied around with other things, and uh, well, I know that's the way it's been. So anyway, uh, yes, there was a question, and I just uh, had left a job in '82, I guess it was, and uh, nothing on, no prospects at the time, and so. My father said, well, I think you should try to get come to work, uh, at least until you get something else comes up. And so I said, OK, so I went on the sales floor and, you know, that's it. No, I mean, that's that's cool. And I, I think a, obviously a neat legacy that I know we're also going to dive into um, a, a little bit. But before you know that you talk about Shules today, you know, what's it like? Uh, I know you guys have a couple of locations, but what, if customer walks in, what are they what's the experience that uh, you're looking for them to have as they come through a Shules? Well, we're in, uh, we got 50 locations. We're mainly in small towns, but we do have uh, some stores in some bigger cities in our trading area. The customer who walks in our store today, well, actually, the first thing the customer will see in most of our stores today, we'll see a bunch of mattresses because we are in the midst of a contest. We have a contest twice a year. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, they just see the full array of furniture. Uh, we probably have average store is probably maybe 15, 20,000 square feet. Um, yeah, they'll see the full array of furniture and bedroom and, and bedding. There's usually a separate bedding department. Uh, and then they'll also uh, see our appliances and TVs on the back wall. We're still in the credit business. Uh, so that's still about 65% of our sales. So, uh, you know, we're always uh, uh, promoting our credit portion of our business. And so, uh, you know, that's that's an important um, advantage for us. Yeah. What's, what's kind of the thing, you know, if you guys look to, as you look to sort of differentiate in, in the markets you're in or just, uh, you know, with other retailers that are around, what, what kind of I guess, really, what's the bread and butter for for Shules, or what's the thing that you think sets your business apart from from others in the space? Well, I would say that credit sets us apart. Um, there's nobody in our trading area that offers their own credit in house. We call it in house financing. Uh, you know, every other dealer uh, offers credit, but it's through a third party, whether it's Synchrony or uh, Wells Fargo, or um, I guess there's others. But uh, yeah, so we're the only one that does that. And that's an advantage for us. And um, in a way, that's the only advantage for us. I mean, most of the stores carry similar merchandise, uh, you know, do similar advertising. Um, so we just think that's our advantage. And uh, yeah. No, is that something, I, how long has that kind of program been in, in place for you guys? Is that something that, and how do you, you know, go about developing something like that? Uh, it's been around since we started. Uh, you know, uh -huh. we're at, we're 200 or excuse me, 125 years old as of this year. We started in 1897. That was the, you know, as far as I'm aware, they started that in the beginning uh -huh. uh, or soon after the beginning. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's just been an integral part of our company. And uh, we have a credit person in every store, uh, which is, uh, you know, that's pretty unusual who, uh, they they call it uh, relationship financing, you know, old school financing, where they sit down with the customer and try to determine, you know, from their application, you know, uh, whether what kind of work they do, how long they've been on their job, their income, and all that stuff, and they make a decision right there. Uh, you know, there's no uh, set uh, nothing written down in stone. It's it's done uh, by person to person financing. No, that that's awesome. And you mentioned in there, obviously, 125 years. That's a guy, you know, quite the legacy, quite the amount of time to to be in business. I, as someone that's been, you know, the family name still involved. As we mentioned, fourth generation. I know you guys have a fifth generation working for you. Um, what's what, reflect on that a little bit? Like when you hear that 125 years, what does that mean to you? Well, it just means uh, to me that we just sort of carry on the legacy of those who came before us. That's kind of what it is. Uh, the uh, you know family came over here in the 1890s and uh, started as peddling. You know that's the way that goes. A lot of them started peddling, um, and then set up shop in Lynchburg. And um, it's just a uh, generational uh, 
know, I guess respect in a way for what they did. And, uh, yeah, so we just kind of keep carrying on the, uh, tradition and, uh, yeah, it's just a family business and, uh, we're, we're, we're happy and proud that we can keep it going. Yeah. I mean, and to be in business for that long, obviously, you know, times change at adaptation. The last two years have been something or another, you know, I'm sure one of the, you know, lots of crazy times throughout the, uh, when you're in business for that long that you see, uh, that you kind of operate through, but, um, you know, what, what are, I, we could take the ta- last two years and put them in a vacuum and talk about them for a whole hour. But, you know, if you think about that legacy, what are, and, and your involvement in it, what are some of the biggest changes that you've seen, uh, you know, during your time with the company? Well, I guess the biggest change was back in the eighties when we, uh, Stores used to order their own merchandise from vendors, and we kind of went. Then we went to a central uh, buying and central warehousing, and uh, that was probably the biggest change. We have, um, you know, we've recently rebranded. This was a couple years ago where we rebranded into used to be Shul Furniture Company, now it's Shul's Home. Uh, that's been a big change for us. That that's only been three or four years ago, but. Um, I would say that uh, since the 80s, uh, really up until a few years ago, we hadn't changed too much. Uh, and, uh, you know, we the merchandising has, has tweaked some. You know, we, we started some other, carrying some other departments. Uh, well, we started carrying, you know, lawn mowers and stuff like that, big ticket items like that, riding mowers and stuff. That's been something that changed. Uh, as far as uh, the core lineups that we've had over the years uh, and the core merchandise really hadn't changed that much. Our financing is similar that it used to be. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I would say that uh, biggest thing was when we went to central buying and so on in the eighties. And that's been so the, uh, I mean, what are you guys doing to stay ahead? I mean, obviously you say, you know, not too much has changed for core business wise, but obviously you're doing things to whether it's, Way you're talking about yourself, obviously you mentioned a rebrand. What are what are some of the ways that you're looking, or you know, what do you look to as you try to stay ahead of the curve in, in this business and and make sure that you know if if you guys do ever need to pivot that you're able to and and things like that. Well, I mean, I think that we're 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 in the we're trying to sell a better customer now. Um, we've had some success with that, but we're also maintaining our core customer, and uh, you know. What we see on the horizon right now, quite honestly, is uh, prices going up, uh, interest rates going up. You know, the supply chain is an issue, uh, but everything, in my view, points toward customers needing financing uh, during the next or the foreseeable future, because that's where, you know, with with uh, as I said, with prices and the way they are and uh, interest and so on, uh, it's go- money's going to be harder to come by. And, um, you know, uh, I just think that we're in a good position because we continue to do our own financing. And so, uh, you know, that's something we hold on to dearly. And um, I see that as a, a big advantage. Well, you, you also, you talk about those two things that, you know, back to the the central warehousing in the 80s and that the continued legacy of the financing do you think those have those played a part in you guys being able to you know i not say whether, whether the storm sounds a little too harsh but to be able to navigate these last two years and kind of all the challenges that 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 the pandemic and everything threw at you oh yeah yeah i would i definitely think that our um centralized buying and warehousing has been a big plus uh, with all the problems with the supply chain and getting merchandise. And, uh, you know, if we were just one store or just a handful of stores getting merchandise delivered directly, I think that would have, you know, that seems like it would have been a hard thing to manage. Um, and our buyers, you know, did a really good job, uh, finding vendors and so on and so forth and switching all, you know, we had to do a lot of switching cause we couldn't get stuff and all. And so I really feel like the, the warehouse and the central buying had a big, big help uh, over the last year or two. And, um, you know, as I said, sir, you know, we had, we had a lot of, I will say that uh, over the last couple of years, uh, and you probably know this, uh, it was just basically we could sell whatever we had. There was so yeah. much money out there and 
purchasing power and, you know, we could just, I think we could have sold more merchandise if we could have gotten more merchandise. Yeah. Um, but um, a lot of cash sales, a lot of credit card sales over the past couple of years. We've seen a change in that over the past couple of months, but, uh, you know, that was a big part of our business over the last couple of years. But we do think that's going to change uh, more and more. Well, yeah. And, and to that point about the, you know, the kind of the coming change, what are, are you guys doing anything to, I guess, what are you seeing uh, as far as sort of the way, you know, consumer trends are going? And, and then what are you doing to kind of prepare for, you know, whatever that change may be? Uh, well, you know, we're, uh, we've been a little slow to, uh, with online uh, sales, uh, because of the fact that most of our customers are lower income and need financing and, you know, it's not as big a part of their, uh, uh, purchasing, I don't think, but uh, we are getting more into online. My nephew has done a lot of work on that and he's, um, really pushing us towards online. And we've seen an increase over the past couple of months. We've worked hard at it. So, you know, we know there's a lot of merchandise in our categories that are sold online. So we, we want to have a presence online, but, uh, you know, I guess that's one thing. And, um, you know, I would st still say that, uh, as I said earlier, I think our financing in the future is going to, um, help us weather the storm or whatever storm is out there. Uh, and, uh, so I guess those are, are two things that are look toward the future. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's that's cool to hear. Um, and I, you know, obviously with a, a legacy like what you guys have, and and the fact you've been, uh, you know, in in business for as long as you have, and um, kind of the success you've seen, obviously that that's translated recently. We we hit on it briefly at the top, but uh, you know, being honored as one of these betting giants by by Furniture Today at their upcoming conference. So that. Well, first of all, how'd you hear about it? I'm sure they reached out and, uh, you know, basic email, but, uh, you know, still interested to, to hear your take there. And then, uh, you know, when you hear it, what, what, what kind of goes through your head as you're processing that, that honor coming down the pike towards you guys? Um, I think I heard about it uh, first from a vendor uh, <laughs> who sent a text. Uh, I think I got a text from a vendor or uh, it, it might, it might've been Dave, a guy from nationwide uh, that sent us on them, but I, as I remember as a vendor and I was, uh, well, we were really surprised. Uh, we were humbled <laughs> and uh, we uh, feel good about it. And uh, I think, um, yeah. So uh, it was, uh, as I said, a big surprise. Uh, and I uh, felt very honored and humbled by it. And, um, you know, whenever you uh, get uh, either selected or chosen by uh, your peers uh, and I guess industry people, uh, you know, that's always uh, uh, feels good. And uh, so, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a great thing for us. I mean, it's kind of validation, right? Uh, to your point that it, it's not. I, you know, you guys could think you're doing, doing what you are. I obviously, like I said, being in business that long means you're doing something right. But to, to hear it kind of told to you by, you know, partners in the industry and other retailers and, and the vendor community, I, it's a credit to, I think, you know, everything that you've been doing that, uh, five generations now of, uh, Shules have been doing to, uh, you know, make an impact, not, not just in that local market too, either, but, um, you know, the, in the industry and in the betting industry, obviously, where this honor is coming from. So, uh, I, I imagine, well, I, you know, with this being a betting honor, you, that's something that you said you guys brought on more recently. That's not something that you started with. So how talk about your, your betting legacy as a company, when did that really get going and, and how has it grown over time? Well, actually we've always been in the betting business. Uh, and it's actually been a pretty good part of our business. Uh, but what I was saying earlier was we made a lot of changes over the past probably three years. Uh, and uh, we think that's uh, contributed to our uh, recent success. And um, I think we told, uh, it's about, if you took, uh, we're up to about 24 to 25% of our, that would be, that would be sales uh, of furniture bedding. It's about 24, 25%. And uh, but we do sell a lot of appliances and TV, so we're we're about twenty percent of total sales when you include everything. You with me? Yeah. Yep. Following. So we uh, 
you know, we, we uh, I think, as you said, the validation and so on, and I think that we, we're, uh, some of the changes we've made recently, we think, uh, have been a plus for us. And um, so we're, 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 real, we're real happy. We feel like we're going in the right direction. I, without, you know, obviously sharing, uh, you know, the, the secret sauce, what are, what are some of those things that you've done that you think have been, that have had an impact and, and helped you um, sort of boost that business there? I think one of the things that uh, helped us is that we uh, we started offering a comfort guarantee that uh, we sort of dallied with in the past, but we sort of made it official. And, um, you know, our customers uh, at the point of sale, customers can see that they can try out their mattress for six months. And if they don't like it, uh, they can bring it back and we'll just let them pick out another one. You know, there's some caveats to that. But um, for the most part, customers can take advantage of it. It's not too difficult. But um, I, that's probably the biggest thing that we did uh, over the last few years to, to help our business. And at the point of sale, we feel like that really gives peace of mind to the customer. We also think that it helps us sell uh, a higher price mattress because uh, customer doesn't, if they get buyer's remorse, it's not a problem. Um, right. You know, they can return it if they don't like it. And, uh, you know, we have a process where we treat these mattresses and sterilize them and do all these other things and we resell them. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I think that's probably been the biggest change that we did. We did some other minor things too. I was telling the the people from furniture today, we had, we changed some, changed our tags. Uh, we changed some pricing. Um, and we've done some re-merchandising and uh, so those are all things I think that have helped. Oh, that's awesome. And, and now, you know, you think about kind of lasting legacy. Um, yeah, having been involved you know, since the 80s, I, you know, as, as you've mentioned, what, what's kind of, I, not to get too, you know, softball-y or wishy-washy here, but you know, as you think about that lasting legacy that you want to have on, on the company, what kind of, you know, what, what do you hope to, to leave, you know, with the, the Shul's name and the Shul business? I think that um, personally, uh, what I've been most satisfied with is the uh, some of the marketing and uh, promotional uh, aspects of the company that tried to make a big difference there over the years. I think that's been the thing that's been the most satisfying. Uh, and also, uh, you know, some of the efforts we made back in the 90s to, you know, sell more uh, electronics and appliances in our stores. and then most recently, uh, the betting, uh, but, um, you know, I think that, uh, overall, you know, I think that we, we, in the bigger picture, which would be the biggest picture, uh, I think that our, our family and the personal, you know, relationship we've had with, you know, certainly customers over the years, but, uh, also our employees and, um, you know, we have, um, a lot of employees who have been with us, uh, a long time. And, um, you know, we've tried to uh, develop employees and, you know, tried to promote employees from within, you know, sort of a cliche, but, you know, that's really an effort that we make. And, um, you know, we have uh, people that have, you know, started out in warehousing and then, you know, became top, the top salesman in the company or started out in the credit department and ended up uh, you know, running our entire uh, computer system, uh, you know, so we've, uh, our best people have learned organically, you know, uh, how things work at the store level. And then they have um, made the biggest difference uh, in our, uh, you know, sales and profits and so on. So, you know, I think that uh, if you wanted to say the big picture, the big legacy is just the fact that we've tried to have our own employees uh, grow and, you know, prosper and um, just make great contributions to our success. Yeah. That's, that's cool to hear and cool to hear it, um, you know, be sort of spoken out by you and talked about that way. Cause that it shows that, you know, yeah, obviously you're running a business, but the people matter. And, and that's, um, that's awesome to hear. And, you know, I, I think a testament to the honor and, and the recognition as well, but, uh, one thing I want to ask, because you, you brought it up about the marketing and and sort of the the impact and you know the work you've done there and um, sort of what that's meant to you, because I you, I know you played a, a 
a big part in sort of, you know, the, the, the change there and, and sort of how you guys have gone to market, you know, done marketing for your company. And you, you kind of think about the, the era in which you were working on that and, and having, you know, um, influence over that. And you think from the eighties to what it is today and, and just how it's changed. Talk about that a little bit, like what, what you've had to do personally to kind of stay on top of the change and how marketing happens. And, um, it, you know, just all the different, different ways it's done today, as opposed to what it was like in the eighties. Oh, well, yeah. You know, when I started here, you know, we just would run a newspaper ad every <laughs> right. week and, you know, a lot of times, you know, we could just put something out there and, uh, you know, people would come in, uh, based on, you know, they just look at the paper and see a special and they would come in for it. And, uh, you know, so, uh, we, um, you know, we had to move away from, um, that, you know, we went, you know, back in the, uh, you know, we, we slowly went away from newspaper, uh, into more mail, you know, direct mail. That was a big part of our changes, you know, and then, uh, we used to do a lot more, you know, radio advertising and we kind of got away from that. We still do it, but not as much as we used to. Um, and then we got into more, you know, television, obviously. And, uh, now, uh, it's all about the number of hits that we can get on the internet, um, and paying for the Google AdWords and all that stuff. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we had to adapt and, you know, you can look at our budgets and you can see how much money we spent in certain areas. And back in 1985, and then you see how much money we spend in certain areas in 2022. So, you know, that's all changed a lot. Um, but, you know, I think we also, uh, you know, our message, uh, you know, it's really uh, important what the message is to the uh, public. And, you know, we've, we've changed that a lot over the years. That's had to change with the times. You know, customers do still respond to uh, a lot of the same uh, marketing and messaging that they always have. And, um, and I think that, uh, you know, you see that on, um, you, you know, the, more, the you get more f for the buck, you know, you see that in a lot of advertising and I, I, I often will watch a uh, home shopping or, uh, other, uh, TV, uh, thing, uh, advertising and marketing for different products. And, um, you know, they're constantly telling you, you know, you'll get this, but then you'll also get this and you'll get, the, you know, when you buy something, you know, you get more and more, or um, they'll they'll talk about um, you know guarantees and um, you know that's a big part of of marketing now you know we got vendors now that you know, not to name but names we got you know, <laughs> mattress vendors that that tell you that you 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 this mattress is guaranteed as long as you own it I mean you know some of that is uh, you know they. they you know, because they know that that if they can get the mattress sold or if they can get the item sold, is the kickback is not very much, and um, you know they know that, and um, so uh, you know I think that's a big part of. Uh, I mean, we have a we it just came to my mind the other day. You know, I was this car dealer that gives in our market that gives you a million mile warranty. Wow. Now, you know, I don't know what the details are. <laughs> right. And and that can always be an issue. But, you know, customers, peace of mind is really important for a customer when they make a purchase. And, you know, I think that anything you can do to create peace of mind uh, is got to be an advantage at the point of sale. And that's, I think, what we see a lot of that out in the market. And we, we, we have tried to uh, kind of tag on with that. Yeah, well, that's too. I mean, you could say obviously the tactics have changed. Maybe the messaging adjusts here or there a little bit. But at the end of the day, I, you know, the one thing about this industry that's never changed is just being able to offer that peace of mind and how important that is to the customer at the end of the day. So, um, you know, I think a, a, again, a testament to how you guys have been able to offer that and and um, you know provide that to customers in your area and and you know turn it into a legacy that's gone you know 125 plus years. So, Jack, this has been Awesome to kind of dive into, you know, the shul business and, and see what you guys are doing and uh, learn a little bit and uh, get get more of the details and understand, you know, why that, uh, that this, this honor from Furniture Today is uh, coming down, you know, on you guys. And it, it's cool to hear and appreciate you taking the time to share the story. We appreciate it, uh, Rob. Thank you for uh, talking to us today. And um, we're looking forward to that event in May. And um, 
What we really like to do is get it twice. If we could get it next year too, we know we've really done something. You know, <laughs> I'd be. I uh, we'll have to look into what the back to backs are like uh, if there have ever been any on Friday. Right. But uh, if there's anyone deserving, it's certainly you guys because uh, the legacy, is, as long as it's been, and, and seeing what you've been able to do is just it's been a fun story to follow and and also to hear directly from you guys. So we we appreciate it. Thanks, Rob. All right. And thanks again to Jack for taking the time and, and sharing his story and the Shules story. Um, you know, cool. Like I said, to see that you know, five generations and 125 years, just um, really awesome to to be able to tap into that kind of, you know, industry knowledge and, and experience and uh, share that with you here on the podcast. So uh, appreciate him taking that time. And as always, appreciate you listening to the Independent Thinking Podcast, and we'll catch you next time. Mm-hmm.